If you have been using Flutterflow for any period of time, then no doubt you would have come across custom functions. In this particular video, we're gonna use the power of AI to actually write our custom functions for us. I'm gonna show you how to slot those into your own applications. I've got a great example, so let's get cracking. If you've been following along in my Flutterflow crash course, in episode six, we use Flutterflow OpenAI to actually write our custom function for us with maybe a certain degree of success. We're gonna switch out to use ChatGPT to actually write our function for us. In the example that you see on screen at the moment, you see a thumbnail and we see a little container that's got some text in it. And at the moment it's showing 496, which is actually the number seconds. Now we're gonna to wanna to take those seconds. We're gonna to want to convert those into a much more readable time format. So for example, we want to show minute minute second seconds um, or we might want to show hour hour minute minute second seconds so let's now draw our attention over to Jack GPT let's actually get it to write our function for us and then we'll come right back here and we'll slot it into the application so let's give it a go so here we are then in ChatGPT. Of course, if you haven't got your, uh, an account already created, please do follow the link in the description to get yourself set up. So what I've done is um, I've loaded up here. I'm just literally simply logged in. Um, I've got a brand new account here. And in the bottom there, I've actually already typed in exactly what I need ChatGPT to do for us. So I'm just gonna say in Flutter, write a function to convert the number of seconds to output a string, which looks like minute, minute, second, seconds, but only show hours when duration exceeds one hour. We don't want to see zero, zero, colon, and then the minutes, and then the second seconds. So let's, um, let's ask ChatGPT to actually write this for us. So let's hit return. So here it goes to writing our function for us. So as you can see here, we don't really need to worry about kind of what it's telling us here, because if you're not a coder, you're not really interested, but actually it's well worth reading what it's actually coming back with, because there's some great information here to actually learn from. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually gonna copy this piece of code for us. So just everything in between the actual function, let's just copy that. And let's move back over to Flutterflow. If you never created a custom function before, it's really, really simple. You just move down to this little option down here called custom functions. And here we can actually now create a custom function. So just at the top left there, I'm gonna click on add. And we're going to say there, we're going to click on function. And here is the is the kind of the editor. Now, all I'm going to simply do here is make a slight change. So as you can see here, we're going to want to pass in the number of seconds into our custom function because we want to take those seconds and going to what we're going to then want to ret return a string representation out, which will be our minutes, minutes, seconds, seconds. So what I'm going to do is on the right hand side is I'm just going to ch choose add argument in here. I'm just going to put simply the term seconds. And then with inside the type, we're just going to pass in an integer we're just going to pass in a series of numbers we don't want it to be null nullable we're always going to pass a value in and that's all that we need to do now with inside this particular area here so it says modify code only below and above this line all i'm going to do now is paste the code that was um that it that was written for me and that's all i need to do just hit the little the little tick there um, in fact, it's telling me the code analyzers up. So I think we're actually all in good, good shape there. So I'm just going to just change this function name and I'm going to call this convert seconds to, to time. Just call it sim something simply as that. And then I'm going to actually now test the function. So I'm going to hit test function. And let's say, for example, I'm going to pass in 500. So 500 seconds, hit run. And very quickly, it will give me hopefully the result that I'm looking for. So there it is. 8 minutes 20 seconds of course if I type in say 5000 which we know is over an hour so you can see there that it's come back as 01 to represent the hour 23 minutes and 20 seconds now of course if you kind of move into hours you're not really interested in seeing the seconds so what we can do we can go back to chat GPT let's talk to it and let's make get it to make that change for us so on the same chat GPT screen, I've just literally typed in there, change function to remove seconds if the time exceeds one hour. So this is the great thing about chat GPT, you can just talk to it like a human, right? So if I hit enter there, off it goes, and it's now gonna do some work for us. So it's practically rewriting our function here, which is fantastic. So the function has been um, rewritten for us. So now let's take this, let's just copy the the function change, hit control C, let's go back to dashboard, let's go back to function code, and let's just now replace the contents there again. Okay, that's all that we need to do. Let's go back to test function, and let's let's keep 5,000 there, hit run. So as you can see, it's now returned back 0123. 
Hmm. Okay, so that's representing an hour and 23 minutes long. Of course, if we go back here and we type 500 in and hit run, it says 0820. So you can see there's 8 minutes 20, but of course they look the same. So let's go back to ChatGPT and let's enhance it a little bit more. Let's tell ChatGPT to actually, if we're in an hour, let's actually remove the, the leading zero. So it looks then more like an hour. So I typed in our description that we need now. So we're going to change the function to drop the leading zero if time exceeds one hour. Let's hit return. Let's see what ChatGPT does for us this time. Okay, so ChatGPT has worked its magic. Now let's take this function now. Let's just copy this. Let's go here. Let's go back into our application. Go back to function code. Let's just replace this out there. Paste it in there. Let's go to test the function. Let's now run with 500 to make sure we get the same results as we had before. So we should see the same value, 8 minutes 20. Now let's now put 5,000 in there. Let's hit run. E by magic. So we've now lost the zero and we've got one hour 23. So that is a fantastic way that you can see how you can use ChatGPT to actually kind of build up your function. You can just talk to ChatGPT um, and, you know, just tell it what you actually want it to do and it will actually just go and do it for you. So this is a great example. So let's, um, let's give this a whirl in the UI and let's see how it looks. So everything's looking good there. Let's now just save the function by, um, by hitting save function up there. Of course, sometimes in Flutterflow, you're going to get this little error symbol up there where we just need to actually check our function. So let's uh, let's go back to errors there. Let's just press that and it's now checking. We should get no errors come back. Let's go back to the UI builder now. Let's try using our function. So here we've got a piece of text. Let's actually say set from variable. Let's actually then go down to the custom functions option here. We're going to call the convert to seconds to time. So we're just going to press seconds. And just for this particular demo, let's pass in 500. Hit confirm. Uh, or we need to set default value as well. So let's just choose zero there. Hit confirm. And then we can, let's fire up the application and let's see what we got. Right, so here's our example then with 8 minutes 20. That's exactly what we're looking for. Let's just go back to Flutterflow. Let's just slightly make a change now to the value just to ensure that we've actually got um, everything sort of working. So let's just change that to 5,000. Hit confirm. Let's go back to the test mode. Let's hit instant reload. And we should now see one hour and then the minutes. So there you go. Never forget the power of using AI to support your no code development. We've just used it here to create a function for us, but you can use AI tools to support many aspects of your no code development. And we're going to be touching on so much more in the channel over the weeks and months. So if you do like this sort of content, please do like the video. Please also subscribe to the channel. There's going to be so much more coming. And of course, if you are new to Flutterflow, please do check out the beginner series where we're building out a YouTube searcher app. That's a developing uh, sort of series. So I hope you enjoy that one. And of course, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.